this whole thing with the Titanic is really quite fascinating. There's a lot of curious things about it, the right? The Titanic mystery is just very strange. Yeah. We're trying to be as authentic in replicating the trip as possible, Birdman. And as you know, the Titanic did not reach New York. It was lost at sea after it hit an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. So what, what do you mean? You're going to drive the ship into an iceberg? You're listening to the Junior Birdman Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Junior Birdman Podcast. I am your host, the Junior Birdman. Today's show is going to be a little bit longer than we expected. Uh, we're going to have all dedicated to the Titanic, though. We're going to bring in our producer first, who we sent out on a little bit of a research project, discover what she found out regarding some conspiracy surrounding the Titanic. Then we're going to bring on an old friend of ours, Jason, who we had on the show originally and had some problems with. He's going to come up and give us an update on a project he's uh, working on related to the Titanic. Uh, as many of you may know, uh, April 15th is the uh, uh, original anniversary of the Titanic sinking back in uh, 1911. Uh, and we sent our research our producer Callie to go out and do a little research for us on this. And today she's going to appear on camera for the first time. You hear her a lot of times in the background, but this will be the first time you actually get a chance to see her on camera. Callie, welcome to the front side of the show. Hey. Hello, everyone. Welcome. First time you're on camera. So how does it feel? Yes, I'm showing my face for perhaps the first and last time, depending on what sure, happens. Everything will go fine. So this whole thing with the Titanic is really quite fascinating. There's a lot of curious things about it. The right? Titanic mystery is just very strange. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, tell us what. Tell us all about it. Okay. So let's get into it. And the footage you're looking at is from the documentary Titanic: A Shocking okay. Truth. Okay. So the White Star Line is who built the Titanic. It was built in Belfast. That was under Lord Peary. They were ultimately bought out by J.P. Morgan. They built three ships, the Olympic, the Titanic, and the Britannic. And this was at a time when the passenger ship industry was very competitive. There was not a lot of oversight, not a lot of regulation. Okay. There was a lot of fraud, a lot of corruption. They often overpacked ships to try and get more cross voyages. So the Olympic was the first ship they finished in June 14th, 1911. It set sail under Edward Smith. He was the Commodore of the line and ultimately put in charge of the Titanic when it went down. And their first accident under the Olympic was about a week later on June 21st when they had a wreck in the stern in New York. That was the first. They had another wreck too, right? That was And then there was another wreck mm -hmm. uh, about three months later in September, where they read into a warship. This was in Southampton and the starboard side was very badly damaged. They had to limp back to Belfast for repairs. And ultimately the military inquisition found that the Olympic was at fault for the accident, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. And as a result, there was no insurance payment made to White Star yep. for the damage caused to the Olympic. And that was a big part of what right. people believe caused this whole conspiracy theory. Right. So what were the damages that they had in that second accident with the warship? Which they So could... there was a bent crank shaft. There was a damage propeller. There was a bent keel, which couldn't be fixed. That caused a consistent list to port. It would be millions and millions of dollars to fix it, something they really weren't prepared to do at that point. They were trying to make money already and they'd already invested so much money into building the ships. So in October, the Olympic went back to Belfast to do permanent repairs after it had done some temporary repairs. The two ships were in dry dock consistently. And while they were there side by side, remember they look very much like each other. You can hardly tell the difference. There's just some minute differences which is why I believe that the conspiracy is real. But basically they looked almost exactly alike. There's no activity, they're in dry dock, there's very little press at the time, there's no government agency snooping around, no watchdogs, no journalists, even photography was very new at the time. That's true. And they had to, yeah. the damaged propeller on the Olympic had to be swapped out with a propeller for the Titanic. Uh, and there was a lot of damage. It was in it was in dry dock for about two weeks. And you know, you can look at some of the differences. The main differences I noticed that stand out to me were the uh, ho were the ports, the portholes don't match and the windows don't match. And so you can see 
that there are more portholes on one ship than the other, and the one that has the matching portholes on the day the Titanic matches looks like the Olympics portals and not the Titanic's, and that, to me, is what makes me believe it's true. Plus, it really probably wasn't that hard. All they had to do was swatch out, swap out some of the silverware, swap out some of the, the curtains and towels, and, you know, swap out some of the life jackets and the life preservers and some of the boats and whatever the banners, and the two ships were almost identical. Nobody was really going to notice at the time. Nobody was looking into anything, so I think they were able to do it and get away with it. Now, whether or not... That's another part of the conspiracy, is whether or not you know, they intended to sink the, sink the Titanic or Olympus to collect on an uh, insurance claim against that boat is a whole other thing. Whether or not there was a diabolical plot uh, that let it down. Now, the captain definitely did a very poor job at steering the ship on that night and accelerated when he probably should have not and just took the worst course even head on would have been a better choice. And, you know, he was obviously a reckless captain. He'd been the one who caused the two other prior wrecks. So I don't know whether yep. he was intentionally causing the accident on purpose as part of some larger diabolical plan. Maybe he was just an incompetent Commodore. Maybe it was just a cursed ship. That I'm not clear on, but to me, it looks clear that the ship that went down in the middle of the Atlantic was not the Titanic, but it was actually the Olympic. Well, Kelly, I think you did a fantastic job researching this. Everybody give her a big hand, and thanks for joining us. Go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, all. All right, well, there she goes. That was fun. That was good. All right, so we're going to bring on our friend uh, Jason next. Now, Jason, we had him on our show prior, and there was a little controversy. A lot of you reached out to me afterwards. Uh He's trying to teach some kids some uh, inappropriate behavior. We've brought him back today to discuss a new program he's got. We hope it works out a little bit better. Uh, we'll go ahead and introduce him. Jason, welcome back to the Junior Birdman podcast. Well, thank you again for having me, Birdman. So you have a program now where you're trying to replicate the voyage, the original experience of the original Titanic for people and traveling the North Atlantic, right? Yes, well, we've spared no expense in making the experience as real as possible. The ship is a very close replica of the original Titanic, much smaller, of course. And we took the exact same route as the original ship, boarding processes, setting sail, and everything from Southampton scheduled for New York, just like the original. That's interesting. And even the same meals, I understand, you're serving. The same decor from the early 20th century. Everything to match that era, right? Yes, we did. We have the same artwork and styles throughout the ship. The same kind of plants and wallpaper and flooring as the original ship. Even down to the silverware. But China being used to serve the guests their meals all to emulate exactly what it was like on the Titanic in 1911. Even uh, on the uh, outside, I understand, the decor and the painting and everything on the outside looks just like the Titanic, too. Yes, on the outside, we use the same stylings, the same colors. We even did away with the extra lifeboats and life jackets, just like they did in 1911 to try and accommodate the more luxurious aspects of cruising the North Atlantic at night, very close to the original. I mean, that seems a little bit dangerous, though. You took away all the life jackets and the lifeboats. That seems like it's a little bit uh, scary. Oh, well, we are wanna... trying to be as authentic as we can in every way, Birdman. Once we reach the final destination of the cruise, we want the experience of the passengers to be as real as possible in every way. So when they get to New York, that's the final destination. They're gonna, you want everything when they get to New York. Well, to be... this trip, like the original, is scheduled to go to New York, yes. But we're trying to be as authentic in replicating the trip as possible, Birdman. And as you know, the Titanic did not reach New York. It was lost at sea after it hit an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. So what, what do you mean? You're going to 
drive the ship into an iceberg and sink it in the middle of the North Atlantic, just like the Titanic? No, no, of course not. It would be nearly impossible to even arrange to have an iceberg uh, replicate the wreck of the Titanic in the same way. No, we've had to find other ways to replicate that part of the ship, but we think it's going to be equally as exhilarating and thrilling for the passengers as the original experience. What do you mean? You're 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 going to sink the ship in the middle of the North Atlantic with everybody on board? As I mentioned, Birdman, we're offering an authentic experience, and part of that means providing a real, authentic, emulated disaster, and that's what we're offering our customers. Wow, that does sound adventurous, and I guess you'll have at least some rescue boats nearby to try and rescue people when they're, you know, clamoring to get off the boat into the water, so at least they're saved, right? Were there rescue ships on the original trip, Birdman? No. That would be deceiving our guests. We're not about to compromise our values just to placate some people who don't understand what we're trying to offer our customers here. Are the passengers that you're bringing on the ship aware of what you plan to do once you get the ship into the middle of the North Atlantic? That it's gonna... Now, that wouldn't be authentic, would it, Birdman? No. We're offering passengers the real deal. There are some organizations working with us who are aware of the end result of the voyage, but they're keeping it a secret from those they're booking for the trip so as not to spoil the surprise for them. Organization? What organizations are working with you to do this? Mostly rest home facilities and long-term care facilities for the elderly. I don't want to give away any names as it may be embarrassing to them. They are paying a lot of money to give these people the vacation experience of their lives. Wow, so rest homes are sending their elderly patients on a cruise in the North Atlantic that's going to end up having them drown in the middle of the ocean uh, to replicate the Titanic? Well, the patients don't know that. They're given the experience of their life, being waited on, handed foot in the lap of luxury and style that they can't even remember. All they remember is this is the kind of luxury that only the super wealthy could experience at the time they grew up. Now, they they get to be the super wealthy for a change. They get to be weighted on hand and foot. They get to be the kings and queens of the sea. Until they end up drowning in the middle of the ocean a few hours later, right? I think you're being a little bit overly dramatic here, Birdman. Most of these people don't even know what's going on around them day to day. And here we are giving them the gift of luxury, allowing them to relive the small spark of their childhood that may give them some sense of joy in the late stages of their life. And then they drown and die. I think we all realize that life has consequences, and if you want to play with the big boys, you have to take the risks that the big boys take. I don't even know what that means, Jason. You just said a few minutes ago that these people don't even know that they're taking a cruise, and now surely they don't realize what's going on. Their last voyage of life is going to be this... Aren't we all really on our last voyage every day of the week, Birdman? So stop being so melodramatic. We're doing something for these people that no one else will. And we're the only ones doing it. We're the only ones who care enough to do it for them. Well, I can't say I wish you success on this venture, Jason, because it sounds like a lot of bad outcomes ahead with regards to this. I hope you personally are safe, and uh, I hope as many people as possible end up surviving this. And I thank you for at least sharing your plans with us here today. I can't understand why you find this so troubling, but I do thank you for giving me the time today, Birdman. Sure. Thank you for listening to the Junior Birdman Podcast. Be sure to like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell to be alerted when new videos are posted.